Basketball season has returned. Ladies and gents, welcome to season two, believe it or not, of Perfectly Broken Podcast. Now, today I have some special guests, two close friends of mine, Greg Bone over here and Richard Kiley, who's been on the show before, and a special, special guest, beautiful Fiona. Thank you. Welcome to the show, lads. Uh, Greg, uh, you, me and you spoke there recently. You've been training with me for a while, and first of all, I want to say massive congratulations to you because uh, before we get into it, uh, the, I've, I've grown up with you and I've seen what's happened to you the last couple of years. In the space of a year and a half, you've gone from one extreme to another uh, in a good way, and I'm very, very proud of you. I just want to say it on the camera before we get started. Now, you're here today with yourself and Fiona here to promote an, an event that's coming up. Uh, just take over there. Yeah, I suppose, um, yeah, I'm Greg, and uh, thanks, Mike. Um, yeah, a couple of years now, I suppose, and uh, we are here to promote a recovery month. Um, I found the services I had, um, you know, with a problem with drink, uh, alcohol, and, um, you know, I drank because, you know, I thought that had solved my problem, you know, and it only made things worse over time, um, and it became aggressive, and... Uh, you know, I needed help and I didn't want to drink anymore. I wanted, I suppose, I'm married, I have kids. I wanted to be the best person I could be. So I wanted to stop drinking and I didn't want to stop drinking just for a few weeks or a few months or yeah. do sober October or anything like that. I wanted to stop for good, you know, because I had a problem with it. You know, I had a bad relationship with it. And, uh, you know, I reached out for help and I found... The services uh, up in Fedicairn, uh, TASP, Tala Addiction Support Program, mm. and um, the counsellors there, and they gave me a lot of help, you know, mm. um, and I'm glad to say I haven't had a drink in over two years. So. Wow, that's impressive. The, uh, it's probably worth just, right, this is pretty heavy to unpack for you, I would imagine, right, so it's probably worth acknowledging that it's, you're quite nervous, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <'Cause> yeah. That, <laughs> and that's com that's completely normal because I I'd be Jesus. No, there are a lot of people that go through this. Uh, I sound nervous, do I? <laughs> you look nervous. Thank you. No, and again, uh, fair play to you because especially for men, uh, a lot of men struggle with speaking out and speaking, especially speaking in the camera. So no, uh, that's that's uh, you're doing great, by the way. And Fiona, what part do you have to play in this? Um, so I'm the senior project worker up in Talent Addiction Support Programme and uh, Greg came to see me. He was referred to us from um, Talla Hospital and when Greg came in to see me, he was very broken, mm. very broken from alcohol. Um, Sorry, Fiona, can I just move the mic on the side? Yeah. 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 Um, so Greg was absolutely broken. Um, yes. And I don't even like saying broken because I don't believe we're broken. We're just a little bit lost. And Greg was very lost. Um, his health was really, really bad from, from his addiction. Um, and the man that's sitting beside me today has completely transformed his life. Um, he Thanks to the services. <laughs> 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 no, well, you came and, and you did the work, you know. Um, so Greg <coughs> came. <coughs> he listened he took on board suggestions and now he's reaping the benefits and his family mm. are reaping the benefits. And the person that's sitting here today is somebody completely different to, to who he was two years ago. Cool. Deadly. Deadly. So I suppose we just unpack, we go back and unpack it a little bit, right? So my experience of you as, as a kid, and I suppose because we all grew up together when we were having yes. a crack, right? So, and here, by the way, just share what you want to share. This isn't like, I don't want you to... We grew up in similar circumstances, <coughs> I suppose, yeah. But we all grew up in the, the, the kind of the, the, the same friend group. And we started off, I suppose, drinking when we were about 17, 16, 17, there, thereabouts. I started off social. Some had more proclivities towards, I would suppose, the, the madness or the, the crack, yeah. as we termed yeah. it. <laughs> um, case in point here, um, as we, I suppose, as we were, got progressive. But I suppose the question I have for you is, when did it go from, I suppose, having the crack to you seeing that, well, this is becoming a problem? Yeah, quite um, early on, I suppose. I didn't see it at the time, but, you know, I think I, it was always to excess and it was always to n not want to be myself and I felt uncomfortable, 
um, and quite nervous around people. So I drank and uh, that helped me a lot, you know. And that was the madness you probably got have seen, you know, when mm. we were out having a crack. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's a progressive illness. So um, it was over time and uh, it came to a point where, you know, I couldn't, couldn't go back. I was in addiction. It, it's not it's not nice um, and it's a hard thing to get out of but uh it can be done you know and there's there's uh there's people there to help and the services there to help in and in how did you uh how did you find out about fiona um i was referred i went to, i was in the hospital you know and um they said look you're drinking too much you know you need to go and see somebody so they mm. referred me Um, i got a call off fiona and she asked me to come up to have a chat with her and you know i took it from there um that was um 2021 i suppose i did drink a lot over covid but i can't blame covid because of you know i had a problem before that that's why i was actually gonna ask you fiona have you seen the numbers going up since covid the number of people coming into yourselves absolutely um yeah especially for alcohol you know mm. um because people weren't accountable to anybody you know um all the wor- anybody who was working was able to do it through through Zoom, so yes. they were able to hide it that little bit easier, you know. But yeah, there's definitely been a huge increase in, in people coming to us for, for alcohol addiction, so, mm. yeah. And is it just alcohol addiction you deal with? No, you know? no, we deal... Well, we, we run a community alcohol programme, mm. um, but we also see clients for... We have a methadone programme. Um, we have a great doctor who works with us, Dr. Garrett McGovern, and he provides um, methadone and suboxone to, I think we have 63 clients on our methadone clinic. Um, and then we also provide key working and counselling for, for anybody with any kind of addiction. Um, we, we've seen a, a huge increase <coughs> in crack cocaine and also powder cocaine mm. um, and weed as well. A lot of young people come and looking for help and support with their weed use. That's really interesting. That's something that I would never would have, would have associated in my own ignorance. I never would have associated as weed, like weed, I suppose, now has become yes, mainstream. Sure. Particularly, you see over in the, the States, it's being legalized in so many states, and it's a lot of people are advocating weed as oh, a relaxing drug or yeah, relaxing drug thing. or something that expands your mind, all that type of yeah, stuff. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'm not familiar with weed, I don't know the, the thing, but my own interpretation, I suppose, my conditioning from other people is that weed would be harmless so i never would have associated that with people going to addiction services to um what what i think it is i think it's you know years ago the thc levels would have been quite low but now it's just like what chemical level isn't yeah Yeah. now it's quite high so i think that's what's causing the problem for the young people you know and and a thing that you hear the young people saying is ah sure it's a plan sure so Mm. is heroin so is cocaine Mm. you know so people don't realize the harms um that weed can cause yeah, well, like my own experience, and I'm looking for this is everyone's experience. Yeah, yes, here, please. Like, yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> drugs are becoming, particularly cocaine, is becoming so mainstream. When you go out, you know, people are having a point in one hand and they probably have something in their pocket, you know. Mm. <clears throat> and it's almost becoming socially acceptable now, whereas, you it's know. It's a social norm, really, isn't it? It's a social it norm, yeah. It used to like, be, you're going for a pint now, it's a pint in a bag. That's it. That's mm. it. Like my own experience, I've dealt with uh, cocaine addiction in the past, and for me, like Greg, you asked Greg a question there. When did you? When did, did you feel like you crossed the line? Mm. And the, 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 <coughs> it, it is that blurry line. It's, you don't see it until it's too late for most people, you know. So I completely understand where you you you, you yeah. don't realize when you when creeps, you cross it. Creeps up it, on cre- you. it creeps up yeah. on you. Yeah, you for me, it started out. One weekend, let me try it. And the coca- cocaine is one of those drugs where the first time you try it, it's amazing. It's beautiful. It's the best thing I've ever done. I've never felt like this before. And slowly, the, you, don't, you, don't, you don't get a high anymore. And you, you keep on chasing, you keep on chasing until you realize mm. you start, oh, I'm, I'm going to try on Monday when the football is on. Okay, let me try on Monday, then Tuesday. You start making excuses then. Then you start lying to your family. Then you start lying to yourself at, at some stage. And oh. it's... Uh, I'm likely enough that I, I did I did seek help. I did do counselling for a good bit. And that's what I was going to ask you. How does uh, counselling help when you're trying to stop ad- uh, addiction? That's a good question. That's a, <laughs> that's a tricky question. You're welcome. <laughs> probably, probably, probably individual to the person. Absolutely, yeah. You, you definitely have, have to, to be the open to where the they're country, at. Yeah. You know, what works for me mm. mightn't work for Greg, mightn't work for you. So it's about just mm. 
helping people unpack and and uh finding what works for them you know i might think that this way will work but it mightn't suit greg or mm-hmm. it mightn't suit whoever's sitting in front of me so it's about just help helping them unpack their lives and and, yeah. and and discover what works for them well it's really interesting what you said right because i never would have had this down it'd be interesting to see what you, what your perception of them was because when you we were kids like you were always well to find kids we're not but like sorry kids as in like 18 up to well yeah, like, I yeah. still define myself as a kid because <laughs> <laughs> maturity levels would be great <laughs> so when we were younger not even when we were younger all through our friendship I would have had you down as confident as yeah or present yourself as confident outwardly confident and funny and someone would be able to defuse the situation or lighten the mood or change the mood in a, mm. in a room just with a comment always very <laughs> funny uh, great crack so it's really interesting to hear you say that you know you needed to have that confidence to drink to have the confidence and mm. you know, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have had that yeah I wouldn't have had that perception so it's really interesting I suppose that I think I can I can understand that mm. a little bit I think sometimes especially when you're growing up in a group of friends when people have a perspective perception what's the word perception, perception right. of you you tend to want to keep that up so say for example greg was a funny guy mm. so you feel you almost feel like you feel the pressure to be that funny guy all the time assume the role. yeah assuming that role and if that takes let me drink a little bit extra than everybody and i think that's what lead, like for me it was more I, again i was the fun uh, the fun guy chasing the ladies and so i needed that extra confidence when and when i did when i did cocaine for the first time that's what I felt gave me that com- that extra confidence. But what I didn't look into was the fact that what I didn't see was after you do your cocaine, what happens the next day when I'm left in the help in in my bedroom alone and the down come the the calm down starts and I'm sitting there sobbing and you know so I think sometimes you do fall in uh, you you do feel that pressure of uh, of uh, being being certain person in the, in the group. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's my that's the way I looked at it anyway. So Fiona, and again, excuse my ignorance here. So these probably sound like stupid questions, but I'm assuming we'll never know. There's going to be other people listening here that will probably have the same question. So, is it a thing that addiction is masking a root cause of a an underlying issue, or is can addiction actually be just the issue? And again, that might be a complex question based on someone's individual circumstances. Although I don't know, that's the for me, I think, you know, a lot of people say, oh, weed is the, the gateway drug. I think trauma is the great gateway mm. drug, you know, and, and what's traumatic to me mightn't be traumatic to mm. somebody else. You know, people think trauma has to be abuse. It has to be a car crash, divorce, <coughs> a parent locked up, you know. It can be something as simple as experiencing bullying in school and not being able to cope mm. with it. That can be really traumatic for a child and then you know, they shut off from their emotions, they shut off from themselves when they experience trauma and then they find drink and drugs and they mm. medicate and to, to get rid of the trauma. Mm. And would you have been resistant to going to seek help or were you? No, no. Um, I was always open to, you know, any kind of help. I'm not that type of person that... So I suppose I when I knew I had a problem, I wanted to make everyone else happy and think i didn't have a problem so you know i'd go to see a counselor mm-hmm. um but i'd still be drinking you know and there was times i went drunk the counselors um but that was uh that wasn't until i was really ready to stop i think you have to want to stop mm-hmm. you know um and you know it, again fiona said like you know there's always some sort of trauma or something there for me i had a car accident when i was young um that set me back a lot and you know a lot of kind of ptsd from that maybe um but yeah i don't know but there was there was no real resistance there i was always fairly open in counseling i suppose um i didn't want to be an alcoholic <laughs> you know i didn't want to. it's not it wasn't my aspiration to grow up and be drunk like that. you know it was never uh, my intention i don't think anybody wants no. to be an alcoholic <laughs> No, it was never my intention, and that's not the path I ever wanted to go down. So, yeah. you know, when that happened, um, Have you ever I, in denial around it? Um, no, no. I, as a friend, I think you will. Yeah, friend, I, I early you stages, will. I suppose. Yeah. Um, when we were younger, mm-hmm. um, I wouldn't have seen it as a real issue, but it was always the last one to you know leave the party. 
I always wanted to go somewhere else. Yeah. You know, I always wanted to go back to the gaffer and sit in the kitchen. Um, I think I can relate with uh, <clears throat> the fact that you, it, it, you're always the last one. I, you know, you're saying it's, it has to be you that want to give it up because I, <clears throat> my divorce, I'm going through a divorce and I think I have a massive part to play in that. It's because I felt at the time, because when I, the first time I, uh, the second time I done cocaine, I actually said it to my wife. Because I, I, I always wanted the help. Mm. I wanted the help. I wanted to change. But when I said it to the individual at the time, looking for the help, but then it turns into some people kind of almost force you. Okay, you have to give it up now. And I think that's the wrong way. For me, anyway, I felt like when you're pushing me to, <laughs> when I'm not ready and you're, push, you're telling oh. me, you better stop this or uh, or this can happen. You better stop. I think it, it tends to push people the other way. For yeah. me, they didn't know. And until I got to a point where I realized, okay, I need I need to do something here because if, if I don't do anything, I'm going to end up six feet under, you know, that kind of way. So it and is that thing. Where yeah, it's, it's again, where a lot of cases you have to get to that point. Of, you know, I wish you didn't, but a lot of mm. people do have to come to rock bottom, mm. you know, to want to get help. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'd suggest that if, you know, you think you might have a problem going, and speak to somebody about it before you have to go to where i went you know and it was a very very dark place um and the scary the scary thing is a lot of people get to that path and they don't come back out and we've we have lost a lot of people especially the last couple of years yeah on a yeah, daily basis few, some uh, somebody's taking their own life because you do fall into that hole where you can't get back you, or you feel like you can't talk to anybody so if anybody is suffering with an addiction there's no harm in if you can't talk to your family member or something like that. Reach out to somebody like Fiona. Uh, I'm sure your, serv- your, your services, you provide services for people. To co- you do. And is it, is it free, by the way? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it is free. Um, anybody can come to our service, you know. Uh, we, we don't refuse anybody. Now, we might have a little bit of a waiting list, but we try and mm. keep them down to a minimum. But, yeah, if anybody is suffering with an addiction, we're here to help, we're here to support. And there's loads of services in Tala. You know, we... Our service mightn't be suitable for everybody, but there's I think there's eight services in mm. Tala that you can access. So we've day programs, mm. we've family support, um, the um, we have methadone program, we've crack cocaine programs. So Tala has a huge amount of services mm. that are available for anybody who's looking to access mm. access treatment. Well, it was recently at your wedding there. Um, Congratulations, by yeah, the way. Congratulations. About time. How many years yeah, is that? Is? You've grown up. <laughs> I tell it was considering signing up to a twelve-step program after myself. But I was really <laughs> trying too much of it. But um, there's one thing I suppose that we we haven't spoken about, and that you actually spoke about really powerfully and eloquently at his at his wedding was the impact that your addiction had on others yeah. around you. And it'd be interesting to get both your perspectives on it. And um, I suppose what impact did your drinking have on others around you? And again, just to to, the level of comfort that you're... Yeah, no, massive. I, you know, I didn't think it at the time. Thought it was only hurt myself, like, you know, most people think. But, you know, when you come out of it and and, uh, you start to realise how many people your lives you've affected. You know, it wasn't Mm -hmm. just me, me, immediate family. It was like friends. It was it was was other family members. Um, Because these people are, you know... They're worried about you. They love you. And, you know, they're lying awake at night wondering where you are. You know, you have them in home or... Um, and then, you know, ultimately, like, worried about your health. Are you going to die? Mm. You know, how long have you got left to live? How long can you carry on drinking the way you're drinking? I suppose for my siblings, even, that was a major um, yeah. thing they talked about, like, you know, mm. um, with me. Um, when, 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 I, when I talked to... Uh, when I talked to them about me about my addiction, they they said they were really really worried about me. And I I would you know, have been one of those people that was very worried. You about were there you. for like, me. I was from, yeah, yeah. I remember speaking to one of our close friends, Miguel, and I said it to him. I was like, look, he would have probably a month or two if he keeps on going the way he's going. So, yeah, so. no huge huge impact. And then Fiona, I suppose from your from your expertise and your area of uh, work. What's your observations around the impact, I suppose, that addiction has on, I suppose, the, the addict's wider circle? I suppose <clears throat> the way I look at it is, you know, it's it's a family disease. Mm. One person may use, but the whole family suffers. That's the way I look at it. And, you know, it's 
for me, um, a lot of people don't see the harm and they don't realize the harm that they're causing. You know, they're robbing their family's peace of mind. You know, the, the, the families have sleepless nights, you know. So recovery is about giving back the peace of mind to the family mm -hmm. members. Um, but the family members have to recover in their own right too because they'll have picked up kind of unhealthy coping mechanisms mm -hmm. to, to, you know, they, they enable and they, they, they can almost keep their loved ones stuck in addiction. Um, unknown to themselves so the family member have to recover too and there are family support services there for family members so mm. that they can recover in their own right as well and one of them i think is alanon is that correct i think they're are they doing a, a no, that's a that's a 12-step program much like any other 12-step program but um there are supports available yeah there um, are family within, support groups yeah, and um, yeah. there's there's wasp we um part of our service we've swan family support mm where we provide counselling for the family member. And then there's also the holistic therapies that go on. Mm. You know, it's a bit of self-care for the family member because they're tormented watching their mm. loved one in addiction. So um, they need to, to look after themselves and, and mm. practice that self-care in, mm. in any way that they possibly can. And, and that support is there for families, even though their their family members are in addiction, mm. the, the family can still avail of them so, services, yeah. even if the person themselves you know, aren't, aren't willing to get help or don't want help. Yeah. Now, the uh, the events that you have coming up, I, I just want to speak a little bit more about it. So what day uh, what day is the, the event going ahead and what's going to be involved? So International Recovery Month starts in September. Um, so the launch of International Recovery Month is up in Tala Rehabilitation Programme, up in TRP. Um, the Lord Mayor of Tala, he's going to speak at it. Mm. Um. And it's basically just we want to promote that, you know, recovery is happening in Tala. You know, um, we want to promote recovery. We want to highlight and showcase that, you know, people can recover from addiction and people are recovering from addiction. Greg being one of them mm. um, and his family are recovering as well. The fa their father's uh, their his son have got their, their mm. father, his sons have got their father back, mm. you know, um, so yeah, that's that's happening on the first. Then we have an event up on the ninth, isn't it? Ninth of September, yeah. Um, it's just a host of events that are going on on the uh, throughout the month, and uh, this one, our one, is in TASP, um, in Fetterkine Community Centre, from ten o'clock to three o'clock. That's we the ninth. The ninth of September, you said, yeah. That's sorry, the ninth of September, mm. yeah. Um, ten till three, and tickets are free. They're on a brand event, right? We'll uh, we'll put the link in the. Yeah, so there's going to be a link, if anybody's watching this side of my page or Richie's page, uh, there's going to be a link on top. If you just click on a link, I'm assuming you just Get put your Get your tickets for down. free, yeah. You just put your name and email address in and, uh, and a ticket be emailed to you. And, and who, who's the event for? The event is for everyone, um, I suppose, in the area um, or anyone that wants so to come. You don't have to be an alcoholic. Yeah. You can be no, dealing with a son no. that's going through it. Yeah. You can just come up and listen and take advice. Yeah, yeah. so we're going to have some guest speakers on today. Um we're going to have a few guest speakers on today. We're going to have a therapist there. We're mm. going to have someone speaking on addiction. We're going to have um, maybe... Uh, we'll have somebody talking about the services in Tala. Um, yeah. We also will have holistic therapies on the day. We're hoping to have a mindfulness meditation as well. Um, and then there's an open AA meeting. So it's anybody can go to the AA meeting if they just mm. want to understand how mm. AA works. Um, you don't have to be an alcoholic to go to it. Normally they're closed meetings, so you can't yes. go, but we're opening it up to anybody who would like to go in, see how an AA meeting mm. works and what it's all about. So and that's, that's on from 12. 12 to yeah. 1, yeah. And the holistics, when you go in, you can sign up. You know, there's acupuncture and we're going to have... Um, Indian head massage. Indian head massage. Yeah, wow. Can we get one of them bad that, boys? That's yeah. the only reason <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but uh, guys... That's you starting behind me doing this. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, come here. There's <clears> also <throat> um, a recovery walk happening. So that's going to start up in Jobstown and they're going to walk down into Killin' Arden and finish off in MacWilliam. Mm. Um, purple is the colour of recovery. So if anybody wants to join in in the recovery the walk... Um, please feel free to, to join. I think that's on the last Friday of September. Okay, That's amazing. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, once again, when I started this podcast, this was the reason for it. Uh, this was one of the main reasons for it. It's just to try and help as many people as possible. And I think what you're doing is absolutely amazing. So mm -hmm. thank you very much. Uh, anything else? 
Um, no, I suppose where can you find out about the services if you want to, you know, see somebody there? Oh, yeah. So if you look on the Tala Drug and Alcohol Task Force page, um, you get a link to all the different services throughout Tala, um, mm. family support, um, any, any, any of the services are on the, the Tala Drug and Alcohol Task Force page. Amazing. Um, you know, as well, the, the Tala Drug and Alcohol Task Force also promotes, um, they do an education grant for people in recovery who want to get back into education. And um, they mightn't have the, the funding, but the task force will help you to, to, to access college. And, you know, they, they've helped so many people um, mm. get their lives back and build their lives back up, really you know, yeah, when they come yeah. into recovery. So it's such, an, it's such an essential service, particularly in Tallaght, and considering the prevalence of it at the moment. And Greg, as Mike said, I tip my cap to you, man. Some, <laughs> Thank you, serious, man. Some turn around, some turn around. And yeah. Good man. I tell you, it's inspiring stuff, so. Good man. Thanks very much. Uh, hopefully we see everybody at the event. <coughs> Myself and Rich are going to be there uh, for head massages and uh, yeah. hopefully we'll get a chance <laughs> to speak as well. Yeah. Uh, you can catch all the links. We're going to add a few links on top of the uh, of the podcast and yeah, hopefully we see you all there. Thanks Brilliant. very much, Fiona. Thanks, Thanks very much, Greg. And, Thank uh, you. Richie, we do more podcasts together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cheers. Thanks very Thank much. You.